Yushkin the watchmaker. Yushkin the watchmaker and his son Vladimir worked in a tiny shop at the end of the village. Yushkin was teaching Vladimir how to repair watches, just as Yushkin's own father had taught him many years before. One cold afternoon when the snow was falling heavily, Prince Igor reined in his snorting horse outside Yushkin's shop. Jumping to the ground, he strode through the door. Snow from his riding boots scattered across the floor. Watchmaker Yushkin, my wife must have this watch repaired by noon tomorrow. She's traveling to St. Petersburg and must take the watch with her. Yushkin placed his eyeglass over his eye and looked closely at the beautiful watch, no bigger than a thumbnail. Its face was made of pearl, the color of the creamiest milk. Its hands were of purest gold, and its figures were sparkling diamonds and rubies. Such loveliness in a watch warmed old Yushkin's heart, but he coughed nervously. <coughs> uh, master, I must open the back of the watch before I can tell you whether I can repair it by tomorrow. Such a fine watch will need expensive parts, which I may not have in my humble shop. But Prince Igor would not listen. Watchmaker Yushkin, you will repair this watch by noon tomorrow, or it will be the worse for you. He banged his horsewhip on the bench and walked out of the door. Yushkin opened the back of the watch, looked through his eyeglass, and sighed. It's no use, Vladimir. I cannot possibly repair it in time. Then Vladimir examined the watch with his own eyeglass, just as his father had shown him many times before. Only the hairspring is broken, father. Uh, that is true, my son, but it is a very special one, made from the curled hair of a butterfly's leg. Not even the city watchmakers of St. Petersburg will have such a spring. There was a long silence in the shop broken only by the ticking of the clocks. Then Yushkin spoke again. There is only one thing we can do, Vladimir. We must return this watch to Prince Igor at once and tell him we just cannot repair it. Should we change into our best clothes, father? We are watchmakers, my son, said Yushkin proudly. And we will wear our working clothes when we visit Prince Igor's great house. We will go in our aprons and caps, and we will carry our tools in our apron pouches. The snow stopped falling as they trudged side by side up the long hill to Igor's great house. <sighs> It's a pity we couldn't mend the hairspring, father. Prince Igor would pay 10 rubles to have his beautiful watch fixed by tomorrow. Yushkin was silent. His son was right. They would have to work for many weeks to earn so much money. Quietly and sadly, father and son continued up the hill. The evening star shone like a diamond in the dark blue sky. They did not notice, for their heads were both cast down. Hey, you two, out of the way! A horse-drawn sleigh packed with passengers crunched through the snow past Yushkin and his son. Then another, and yet another. Each sleigh was crowded with people laughing and singing. Oh, look, they are in fancy dress, father. There's a dragon, a crocodile, an Indian, even a chimney sweep, I think. They are all going to Prince Igor's house. If he is having a party, I fear we will not be very welcome visitors. The two had almost reached the servant's door when they heard someone running up behind them. 
It was a footman in a shining uniform. You are going the wrong way, sirs, he said, bowing low. This way, if you please. I don't understand, mumbled Yushkin. But before he could say more, the watchmaker and his son were guided up the grand marble stairs into the great hall of Prince Igor's house. It was like a dream. There were dragons and witches, giants and fairies, ogres and crocodiles, elves and chimney sweeps, clowns and monkeys. And now, two watchmakers. Inside the Great Hall, the guests were voting for the best fancy dress costume. They clapped for the witch, and then clapped louder for the giant, and then even louder for the dragon. But when the two watchmakers entered the hall, the guests clapped louder still and went on clapping. Yushkin the watchmaker and his son Vladimir won the first prize for fancy dress. This prize, Prince Igor's wife announced, is from my own private collection. And she placed a large golden box in Yushkin's trembling hands. The people cheered again, the music started, and the dancing began. Come now, Vladimir, we must talk to the prince, Yushkin whispered in a daze. But Vladimir had peeped inside the gold box, and his eyes were bright. Oh! No, father, no! We are saved! We must hurry home! I do not understand, Vladimir, puffed poor Yushkin as they reached their little shop. How can this gold box help us repair Prince Igor's watch? Because it is full of butterflies, father, said Vladimir. He carefully opened the lid, and father and son gazed in wonder at the contents of the golden box. Six beautiful butterflies were flitting from petal to petal among a bed of tiny flowers. The wings trembled like autumn leaves in the breeze. With gentle fingers, Vladimir took one butterfly from the box and cut a curled hair from its leg. Then Yushkin opened the back of Prince Igor's watch. Vladimir watched in pride as his father bent low over the bench. But Yushkin's lips began to tremble. It's no good, Vladimir. I cannot do it. My old eyes can no longer see such a tiny spring, even with the eyeglass. Vladimir put his arm around Yushkin. Let me try, father. Oh, thank you, my son. Thank you. Vladimir took the watch with steady hands. His heart beat wildly like the hooves of a hundred galloping horses. He took a deep breath and set to work. The morning came, cold and icy, with the wind blowing snowflakes like the feathers from a burst cushion. Through his window, Yushkin could see the prince riding down the hill. He is almost here, Vladimir. The door rattled, and Prince Igor bounded into the shop, blowing into his hands. Good morning, watchmaker Yushkin, and you too, Vladimir. Goodness, it is cold this morning. Good morning, Good morning, Prince, Prince Igor, said father and son, wondering at the prince's sudden good manners. Here is your beautiful watch, said Yushkin. And I have made a little silken pouch to keep it in. Such a lovely watch. Must it well looked after. Beaming with pleasure, Prince Igor thanked the watchmaker and his son many times, and then placed one hundred rubles on the counter. I always knew you would finish it in time, and as for this pouch, it is so kind of you and so beautifully made. 
I am sorry, Prince Igor, but I cannot give you change for such a large sum of money. I have only seven rubles in the shop. Change? Change? <laughs> Who wants change? And Prince Igor <laughs> laughed till the tears poured down his face like summer rain on glossy leaves. My dear friend Yushkin, this money is not only for the watch repair, it's also the rest of your prize. You left the party so quickly last night that my wife could not give it to you. <clears throat> the old man coughed nervously. Vladimir gripped his arm because he knew exactly what Yushkin was going to say. <clears throat> uh, Prince Igor, we cannot accept either the money or the gold box of butterflies because we were not invited to the party and we were not really dressed up at all. We were in our working clothes. <laughs> I, I know! <laughs> I know! roared the prince. <laughs> it is the biggest joke of the year. My wife was delighted. All those friends of hers spent a fortune on their outfits. <laughs> and they still didn't win. <laughs> the prince slapped his thighs and roared with laughter again. <laughs> Vladimir began to chuckle too. Poor Yushkin looked doubtfully from one to the other, scarcely knowing what to say. Then the prince strode out of the shop, waving goodbye. Yushkin and his son threw their arms around each other and danced up and down, singing and laughing. And the clocks in the watchmaker's shop all began chiming at once.